Hello, Facebook friends. It is a, another wonderful Wednesday, hump day. Everybody, you're halfway through the week. Um, we like to call it Wanderlust Wednesday, and that is why we are here this Wednesday to talk about our one of our favorite topics, um, Italy, added to shopping in Italy for Wanderlust Weekly. I'm sorry that I'm late. Uh, it's been one of those crazy days, and I wanted to make sure that I um, had some goods to show you to illustrate my points in this presentation. Give me one moment to make sure that I am actually live. If you're watching, please give me a thumbs up or a smile or a love so I know that people are watching. Let me see. I'm just checking too to make sure. Okay, I see myself, so looks like we're good. Um, so as you're watching, please feel free to share this because it's gonna be a fun little topic. We're not gonna be on here very long because um, it's just little, a little snippet preview of um, what we're actually gonna write about for our featured blog article this week. Again, we're talking about what to shop for as I hate to say souvenir because souvenir sounds so lame. Um, <laughs> but what to shop for when you're visiting Italy. Um, if you didn't know, I actually lived in Italy as a kid for three years. And then my mom and stepfather lived there recently for two and a half years, um, both in different places. When I lived there as a kid, we were in northern Italy in a town called Vicenza, which is just like a half hour train ride from Venice. So um, we explored that part of Italy a lot. We went to Venice all the time. Um, and then more recently when my mom lived there with my stepdad, they lived in Naples, which is like a totally different country. Um, it's on the south side of Italy. Have any of you guys been to Naples? If you've been to Naples, give me a laughing face. Um, and I say laughing face because Though Naples is geographically beautiful, it's got beautiful landscape, it's got great food, very passionate people. It's sort of a crazy place. Um, I do love it though. I just uh, have to give a lot of my clients that go there a lot of helpful information beforehand so that they're adequately prepared for the Naples experience. Um, but uh, as I said, Naples and Northern Italy are like two totally different countries. And as a matter of fact, um, if you didn't know this either, Italy was not unified as a country until, I'm throwing a date out there, I don't know, 1891 or something like that. Uh, I believe it was in the 1890s. Before that, they were a series of um, nation states and they were separated basically by sort of the provinces they have now, for example, um, Tuscany, I'm sure you've heard of, uh, Venice is in Veneto, um, Campania is a region, um, Emilia Romana, uh, Lombardy, there's all these different regions and they all have different cuisines. They all, frankly, they even had different languages. Um, the most pure form of the Italian dialect is what's spoken in Florence. Um, and it's actually the closest language that we have today to Latin. So um, just so you know, like there's a lot going on in Italy. Um, one could live there for many years and still not experience everything there is to see. Many Italians live in Italy and haven't seen, uh, you know, the other side of the country. Um, so it's a very fascinating country. And if you have any plans to go to Italy, please reach out to me because I know a lot about it and I love to plan trips to Italy. Um, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite places in the world. So without further ado, I'm gonna try to get on to this topic of our show today, which is what to shop for when visiting Italy. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you'll see there, but here are some of the things that I think are more authentic and unique to Italy. I mean, of course you could go and get some little snow globes with the Colosseum and little mini statues of the David. And um, I mean, who doesn't want to get the boxers with 
Dave, the David's um, full glory shown <laughs> on the boxers. But other than the cheesy stuff, here's the things that Italians are um, specifically wonderful and artistically inclined and um, art artisanal value shines through. So um, one of the first things I'm gonna talk about is probably my favorite, if not second favorite city in the world is leather. Um, and particularly in Florence. So Florence has a lot of great markets. Um, when you're there, you're probably gonna wanna you know, walk through the San Lorenzo market. One of the best markets that I like is the, um, I'm totally blanking, I think it's called the Porcellini market. That's what the locals call it. It's because there's this big brass warthog um, there that you rub its nose for good luck. Um, all these markets have these leather goods and leather working has been a thing in Florence for centuries. Um, so I'm gonna show you like one of the purses that I bought there at least 10 years ago, but it's real leather, it's not fake stuff and it's gonna last forever. I mean, it already has lasted 10 years. Let me back up so you can see it fully. I'm modeling my, my purses. Um, but it's just a classic purse and it's got like nice hardware and inside is a soft, um, I don't know if it's suede or what it is, but when you're in Italy, um, real leather, not like the fake leather is something that if you do it, if you buy it from a real, I think they call it pelleteria cause pelle, I believe is is leather, um, you're going to get a good quality product. And Florence is one of those cities where they're known for good leather, whether it's belts, shoes, um, wallets, purses, jackets. Both my husband and I have leather jackets from Florence. Um, I have a really cute wallet. I have gloves. Um, Florence and Italy and leather are synonymous. So next souvenir. Um, these are going to be a little bit harder to transport. And sometimes when you buy them, a lot of times when you buy them, especially if you're buying bigger pieces, the um, craftsman will offer to ship them home for you. And most of the time, I really recommend it. It could be kind of expensive to ship them home. But if you just think about trying to shove it in your suitcase and the likelihood it could break and the stress of lugging it around for the next, you know, X amount of days that you're traveling, it's worth it to pay the shipping fees. So um, ceramics. This is an example of a a picture um, or I, you know, I think it's my mom got this for me. If my mom's watching, will you give me a like or a love? Um, it's obviously beautifully painted. Just look at the the details on the top. It has this little lip so i guess you can hold it i don't know maybe i think she told me it's for sangria um so that it can kind of catch the fruit uh but this one's actually it says it's from sicily so i don't know when when or where she got it but um you can buy ceramics all over italy uh each region that does it has their own sort of characteristic design and motif um i actually have I have had quite a few ceramic pieces from Italy over the years, but um, not all of them have survived the many military moves. And then I also had this really nice butter dish that I bought in the Amalfi Coast because um, I think it's the city of Vetri, which is on the Amalfi Coast, has their own characteristic ceramic design. I bought this butter dish and I had a cat, she passed away last year, who was obsessed with butter and I left it on the, <laughs> The counter one night and she was she knocked it off the counter so she could get to the butter and so no more butter dish um but yeah so i've had all kinds of ceramic uh pieces over the years from italy actually i know one that's in close reach let me grab it real quick and show you okay so this is a this is a spoon rest that i use on my stove top and I'm pretty sure my mother-in-law got this for me, not in Italy, but it is from Italy. 
This one's from Deruda, which I actually went to one of their ceramic factories um, last fall on a trip through Umbria. They're located in Umbria, which is in central Italy, not too far from Rome. Um, so when you travel to Italy, you'll see ceramic shops everywhere. And if you're traveling in a tourist heavy area, of course the prices are gonna be jacked up. Um, what you can do is organize a, a ceramic tour and go to some of the factories, which are probably a little bit outside the main city area. And usually you can get much better deals on your ceramic goods. So look into that, talk to your travel agent about it. If you're interested in ceramic purchases, um, try to go to the ceramic factory. And that goes for the leather as well. I'm going to put these away so that they don't break. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm here. Um, <laughs> what else am I going to talk about? What is next? Um, so another thing I don't have an example of, but uh, when you're in Capri off the coast of Naples, the beautiful island, they're famous for their sandals. So one of the things you might want to buy is a pair of their custom made leather sandals. Um, another thing I don't have an example of is Venetian lace. Um, I think we all know that Venice is famous for their blown glass, which I'm going to show you an example of next, but I don't have an example of their lace. Um, but if you are in Venice for enough time or you've been there, you're visiting for um, the third or fourth time or however long, you know, if you're looking to explore another side of Venice, either get a tour to the island of Burano or um, just take one of the taxis or ferries from main Venice to the island of Burano. And that's where Venice lace is um, made. It's a beautiful lace and it's got its own unique style and threads. Um, the next example I'm gonna show you is blown glass. And uh, this is like one of my favorite purchases ever. Uh, I went again when I went there about 10 years ago I bought this lamp and currently it's on my bedside um, but I bought it like this with this lamp stand and it was hand blown it's kind of crooked right now hold on let me fix this um, just so you know a lot of merchants when they're selling this will sell you these with um, European prongs for outlets all you have to do is get rid of it, go to Home Depot and get a new um, US prong outlet, install it, it's super easy. Um, but I bought this uh, at, at a shop right, out, right off of San Marco Square, which is probably one of the most expensive places you can buy it. But I fell in love with this lamp because it's so unique, it's different on every side, but it has a neutral tone with like nice little inflections of blue and red. Um, so I'm gonna plug it in and show you because it makes a big difference when it's plugged in. light okay so when I turn it around it's just really pretty if you like it give me a like or a love but they I mean this type of thing comes in all different colors and shapes and sizes um, something like this is obviously going to be a little bit more expensive than uh, you know a smaller item um, but I like to buy things that I know that I'm gonna use and have forever because a lot of times those little tchotchkes you can get to in your stands, they just get thrown away eventually because you're like, do I really need this anymore? No. Um, but if you don't know, Venice is famous for their blown glass. Um, when you're there, you'll see blown glass artistry all over the place. Um, the more expensive places are in Venice, like by San Marco Square, <laughs> Rialto Bridge, those types of shops. 
if you have extra time and you're and or you're really interested in um, watching blown glass occur or being at the center of it all, get on a boat or schedule a tour to go to Murano. That's with an M. The lace was Burano with a B. This is Murano with an M um, to go see the glass blowing factories. Um, it's a cute little island next to Venice. Um, it's just a nice little get away from the craziness of, and I hate to say mainland Venice because it's not really mainland, but uh, the touristy part of Venice and you get to see the different examples of blown glass. If you're a fan of Dale Shahuli, for example, he's uh, an American artist who's famous for blown glass, um, who has ties to Seattle. He studied with um, the glass masters in Venice because that's really the center of a lot of blown glass artistry. So that's definitely a good um, souvenir to buy. The other thing I want to mention is cashmere and merino wools. So um, these are, uh, I don't know why Italians are so adept at this because it's not as if cashmere and merino wool can't be spun and put together nicely in other countries because it basically comes down to the type of sheep and is cashmere a bunny? I don't know. It's the type of wool that's used for the garment, but if you're not familiar with it, it's a very fine, soft, luxurious material. It's probably because Italians just have such a great fashion sense that they know the right colors to dye it and the right cuts and patterns to make. But um, getting a handmade or whatever version of cashmere and merino Garments in Italy is also a very good purchase because it's high quality and they're one of the best places in the world to buy those types of things from. Um, there's a lot. I mean, Italian fashion in general is always going to be high quality. Um, the way I like to differentiate shopping in a place like Milan versus Florence, for example, is Florence is very artisan based. So you'll see a lot of um, mom and pop type leather. Milan is the place to go. It's a little bit more industrial, modern. But if you want to kind of focus on the artisan, the, the traditional type of thing, um, Florence is a really cool place to shop. And then the last thing I want to show you just for fun is um, if you're in Venice at any time, you'll inevit in inevitably come across masks. And um, especially if you're there during Carnivale because Carnivale is their version of Mardi Gras, and that's when they dress up in the fancy masks and they have masquerade balls and um, all find all that kind of fun stuff. So um, one of the fun things to buy from Venice is masks. And when I bought masks, I chose to buy something that I thought could be somewhat decorative. I know they have some really fun ones that are probably more practical to wear with feathers and sequins and stuff like this. But I chose this one because it's actually made out of leather and um, it's hand painted, it's stamped and hand painted with gold leaf. Um, and it's just sturdy and it's understated and I use it as a decor decorative piece. Um, my husband has another mask that has like a full scene painted on it, but um, but yeah, so there's a lot of great artists in Italy. I mean, I've personally brought paintings from Italy, lots of paintings. Um, I just encourage you when you're souvenir shopping to think about what that location is particularly good at making, what's high quality, what's distinguished about what they make. Is it local? Don't buy stuff that was made in China and shipped there, unless you're in China, of course. Um, and then also just think of something that you're going to want to keep forever. It's okay to invest a little bit more money in a piece that's going to decorate your home for decades or a piece that you're going to be able to wear or pass down for generations. Um, otherwise, it may not be worth your money to buy, you know, five different snow globes because who knows how long those are going to last. So 
not to say anything bad about snow globes. I like to buy them for my daughter, but um, that's my philosophy on souvenir shopping. And I hope you found this informative. I am going to write a quick blog post this Friday or Saturday about shopping in Italy. Um, if you are not already signed up for our blog, it's at www.peregrinekinship.com. You can also find it by going to our, our website, which is www.kinshipvacations.com. And then just click on the upper right side where it says blog. And you can see a whole wealth of really cool travel tips, um, tricks, and inspiration from um, me and the other travel experts that I work with. Uh, and uh, if you're not already a fan of our page on Facebook, please follow us. We're also on Instagram. We do some really fun photos and um, travel trivia. We are Kinship Vacations on Instagram. We are also on Pinterest. So look us up on Pinterest. We've got some really good tips and information on there. And if you're already thinking that you'd like to plan a trip to Italy or anywhere else for that matter, but Italy is definitely one of my specialties, please go to our website, www.kinshipvacations.com and double click where it says plan a trip or trip planning um, and fill out that form and we'll get you scheduled for an initial consult. It's totally complimentary. We can talk about your travel desires um, and get you on the right path for your next vacation. So thank you again for tuning in and I look forward to next week. I can't remember what we're talking about, but you'll find out soon. Thank you.